Hi and welcome to the channel. In this video I make a routing jig used for making up a series of components like these. So let's see how I make it. This jig that I'm about to create is to make up the uh, nose rib sections, the very uh, front uh, rib bit here, to uh, go onto the front of the forward ribs. There's 34 of them, I believe, that, that are required. So, uh, again, like everything where I've got several to build, I like to uh, create a jig, and uh, this is going to be quite a fast way of making uh, these components up uh, rather than where I've just got a couple to make up I'll just do a tracing and, and, and go through from there so I'm just going to go and draw around the outline in the normal manner that you would sort of trace I'm using uh, the drafting copy paper So <clears throat> just a bit of uh, carpet tile adhesive, I'm just going to give this a quick spray to help mount this on. This is the advantage of the copy paper is it is moisture, moisture stable. So here's my, uh, my bench guillotine, it's rather aged, I made it up myself. Uh, I would not like to say how many years ago. Uh, but it's ideal for this type of, uh, of work. Uh, it'll cut uh, up to sort of 14 gauge steel and up to about uh, 12 gauge aluminium alloy. There we have it. We've uh, sort of nicked around the edge there, not too much to file off. At this section here I will cut out with a normal hacksaw just cut down into the corners there uh, but I'll put the soft jaws back into the vise before I do that. Okay so I'm just going to run the drill through here, through the first hole. Three point three, and I will put in one of my little pegs, which I made from a stub of a three point three. That should fit just fairly nicely, like that. That will hold that in place. Just deburr the back. That's. Uh, further back and then I will uh, fit on there and do the same now put the other peg into that and then what I'll do is after I put the two pegs in I'll draw around and I'll just cut that out roughly with a uh, jigsaw to just to get that roughly to shape and then we can carry on from there. There's my MDF block with the uh, aluminium template on it with the two pegs. Uh, they'll be glued in uh, permanently at the right height once I've got that sorted out but to start off with I'm just going to get this to shape using the sandbox.
So I just needs finishing off now carefully with a file to make sure that these corners are nice and square and straight. The metal template used to make uh, the block, placed it in the centre of uh, this piece here. I've drawn around it, uh, trying to get a, a sort of fairly even clearance of about an inch uh, all the way around. And I'm going to just cut this out with a jigsaw and this will be sort of the main base section. Cut out the centre of here around that, marked, marked this base plate, drilled it and countersunk it to take screws. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bond these and screw them, uh, the blocks together to uh, get things moving forward. So I'm just going to mix up some resin. That's going to be bonded and screwed. You'll see this in time lapse. So you saw me bond uh, this piece of MDF to the base section of MDF and our central piece. Uh, what I've done off camera is I've uh, bonded on some eighth inch uh, birch ply onto the uh, top face here, leaving a whole section there. I've just sanded this to match the top plate and I'm going to go around here and just route this back to the shape of the hole that we have in the top section. I've routed around the hole here so this is now the same shape as the bit underneath. Next task is just to seal the wood uh, with a bit of varnish. These lines are corresponding with the straight sections on here. Wood surface sealed and I've just put a uh, piece of wood along the bottom here that will just help hold everything in the vise for when the uh, when this is in use. So we'll do that to start off with. I'm just going to mix up some uh, epoxy just uh, to hold these pins in. So this is just a, a fast setting epoxy. So a bit of uh, plywood, the thickness that we're going to be using. Make sure that's flush. Turn this side. Just wipe a squeeze out away from that. And we'll let that cure. And then we'll go through and we'll make a, uh, a test piece and see how we get on. Okay then, so the process, I've cut a piece of uh, ply using the template. I would just normally, uh, when we go into production, I would cut a whole strip and then just cut these off accordingly and nest them together in various forms and use a, a jigsaw to cut those into sections like this. I've uh, put a mark on there for the first hole to be drilled. So there's the first hole. I can put uh, this onto this drilling jig now. There along with my, uh, my template and drill through there. So now that's got the two holes to match the template. So next step, our piece of uh, wood that we've just drilled, 
push down onto the two locating pegs and now I'll just go around it with the router. Bearing in mind that this isn't the aircraft grade uh, plywood. Now the marks which I put on top here allow me to draw the lines which will allow me to uh, just clean up the corners where the uh, Whereas I can't quite get in, we can take our piece out, give that a light sand. I say this isn't aircraft grade uh, plywood, so it's a little bit hairier. And it chips out a little bit, but there we go. So, just a little bit of a sand. And there's one item completed. So compare that to our template. And literally just got that little bit in the corner there to take out with a square file or something like that. Or, uh, and I can create a whole bundle of them all to the same standard. There we go. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up. You can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos. Any comments would be appreciated and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Remember, go fly and feel the sky.